Hey guys, Uncle Nightshift here. So, a lot of you wanted a Photoshop tutorial for your own custom camo profiles, which are very handy if you're making up your own paint schemes for your models, or you're reconstructing them from historical photos, or you're just not sure which paints will look good on the model. So, here it is. Alright, so before we begin, I just want to say that this is not a tutorial on how to make intricate artworks like you see in books or magazines. What we're gonna make is a simple reference for your own personal use. Nothing more, nothing less. So what we're gonna need is a tank blueprint. These can be found on the internet and most of them are completely free in high resolution. I chose an SU-100 because reasons, <laughs> and it's also handy to download color samples of the specific colors that you're gonna use. These can be found on the manufacturer's website and let's pretend we're gonna paint our model with ammo paints. Okay, so we open the picture in Photoshop, just a second. And then we import those color samples and put them somewhere... Somewhere in the corner so they won't get in our way. Now go down here and make a new layer. This will be the base color. Make a sample of the color. And uh, as you can see we're painting on top of the blueprint, which which won't take us very far. So we have to move the blueprint layer above the base color. Now we obviously can't see the other layer, so we go into blending mode and select multiply. Now we can color the tank and we'll still see its outlines and we can work with it all day long without even touching the blueprint. So, let's start filling it with the 4BO base color. There are two ways you can perform this. With the basic brush tool, which is like playing with an armor themed coloring book, but it's not as fun. <laughs> it, it has some advantages. For example, you have a lot of control around tight places, but I just don't use it that often. I prefer the pen tool, which creates points, which are then connected with pads, and this makes a vector outline which can be filled with color. This method is faster and more precise, especially when the tank outlines are straight, which is the case like all the time. <laughs> And you can get the entire tank outlined in a couple of minutes, or even less, if it's something simple like a Mark IV or something like that. Obviously there will be a few round shapes and these can be traced by adding extra anchor points, which allow you to make curved shapes. Um, it takes a while to get used to, but once you get the hang of it, the pen tool is... Well, it's a very clever tool. And then you just fill the shape and BOOM! Painting the wheels like this would be inconvenient, so here I always use the brush method, which gets the job done in one click, instead of shaping the path with four anchor points or making a circular path. But yeah, anyway. Now we have the base color done, so we can add another layer. Sample the next color, which will be the Russian Tan 7K, and we can start painting on top of the 4BO. Obviously we don't want to paint outside the tank, because erasing it would take a lot of time, so we go back to the 4BO layer and use the magic wand to select it. Okay. 
And then back again to the 7k layer and we can start painting. This is where the advantage of prototyping the camo profile kicks in. You can play around with each camo patch, its shape, position, you name it. If I was trying to come up with this pattern directly on the model, I would probably have a very hard time, because... Because first, I wouldn't be sure about the shape and placement of each patch, and second, there's a chance the color I choose wouldn't look that good. It might be too dark, or just completely off. And if you're like me, then I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now we can add the third color, which is 6k black-brown. And if we're happy with the shape of the previous layer, it's always better to put this layer under it. The process is now exactly the same, so I'm gonna get it done real fast so we can get to the final step. So, once I'm happy with the result, I always check if I can make the colors look better. This usually means making them lighter, because, you know, it's always better to work with lighter paints, because weathering and that kind of stuff. So, you go to blending options. Here you select color overlay, and this changes the color of the entire layer. That's basically what it does. This way we can try how the model is gonna look if the paint is lighter, and not just that, but also if it's gonna look better if it's more saturated, or more towards grey, and you can always check the difference. And then just do the same with the remaining layers. You probably already see the point why we are working with color samples from the actual paints we intend on using on the actual three-dimensional model. Because this way we'll know that, let's say, the 4BO is too dark out of the bottle, so I'll have to lighten it up. But I need to make sure to avoid using yellow, because that would make it too saturated. So instead I know I have to use light grey and sand. And also you can try how the markings will look. Like, is this too big? Too small? Does it look better at the front or towards the back? Again, super handy if you're making your own fictional camo, but also when you're reconstructing a color profile from a black and white photo because markings were not always white, and you can't always tell what color they were from a black and white picture. So this way you can try out different options and decide which one looks best and most plausible. What I'm trying to say is that the possibilities are pretty much endless and the whole design your color profiles in Photoshop thing is extremely handy and... I'm gonna say it, it made my modeling life easier and my models better. Because instead of repainting each model several times, or even worse, being okay with the first bad attempt and being like, nah, it'll be fine, I can safely and easily try what will work best and then put that on the model and make it 100% to my satisfaction without any repainting or corrections. Well, mostly. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful or at least interesting to watch, and if you did, please give it a like and leave a comment. Uh, I almost forgot to mention that you obviously don't need to buy Photoshop for this, and there's a lot of free software which is just as good and completely free. I just use Photoshop for a lot of things, so I'm familiar with it, and... Yeah, anyway, thank you for watching, a big thank you to my patrons, and if you'd like to get more content like behind the scenes, almost daily updates, one week early ad-free videos, or some cool super HD professional photos, or just the option to chat with me through DMs, 
then consider joining them for as little as one dollar a month. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, so thanks again for watching, I wish you an amazing weekend and I'll see you mates in the next one. No bloopers today. <laughs>